Today we have two very important questions to answer. The first one is if long-term caloric restriction is destroying your hormones and killing your metabolism. And the second one is if a diet break could actually help you lose weight and enhance your progress. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Clementina and I do health and wellness content here on YouTube. I also graduated with a bachelor's degree in nutrition sciences and a master's degree in food chemistry. Today we are debunking the science around diet breaks. Diet break by definition is a period of just an energy balance. So, you, so if you've been following a diet that is restrictive and you're in a negative energy balance and you're eating less than what your body needs to maintain its current weight, a diet break could be a period of time in which you're eating as much as your body usually needs to maintain its weight. Firstly, we need to cover what exactly an energy balance is and we need to explain a little bit more about your energy requirements to function. You have your total daily energy expenditure. This is the energy that you need to maintain your current weight as it is. Your total energy expenditure consists of a few things. The first one is your resting metabolic rate or your basal metabolic rate. They're kind of used interchangeably as terms and that's the energy that your body needs just to maintain its vital functions such as breathing, digestive processes or your uh, heart beating. Then you have your physical activity energy. So this is like the energy that your body needs to perform other activities such as workouts, taking walks. It depends entirely on how much do you move throughout the day. And the last and smallest part of your total daily energy expenditure is the thermic effect of food. And this is the amount of energy that the food that you ingest requires to be digested because your body also needs energy to break down these foods. Also depending on the macronutrient content in the foods this can vary and also how much food generally you're eating. Protein has the highest thermic effect of foods with up to 20% of the energy of protein being used for its digestion and for carbohydrates and fats it's somewhere I believe around 10% at most. I think it was like 8 for fat and for for carbohydrates. A caloric restrictive diet, caloric restriction, would be a long period that you're in a negative energy balance. This is what is required of you in order to lose weight. Unfortunately, if this caloric restriction is too aggressive, often related to reductions in the resting metabolic rate and also reductions in the fat-free mass. So this is the muscle mass. At the same time, perceived levels of hunger seem to rise while while satiety levels seem to decrease, all of these factors contribute to an increased drive of your body to restore the lost weight. Additionally, reductions in the resting metabolic rate due to an aggressive caloric restriction can be observed for years after the diet has already ended, even if the body weight that has been lost has been restored. So this is a very long-term detrimental effect. I only forgot to explain that resting metabolic rate is generally going to decline as you're losing weight because it also depends on the weight that you have. This is very logical. If you're a smaller person, you're going to require less energy. And if you're a bigger person, you're going to require more energy. These decreases in resting metabolic rate are higher than the predicted ones for the amount of weight that had been lost. This is why this negative impact is very important long term. I already mentioned that there is a difference in the perception of hunger and satiety and this is due to some hormonal changes. Generally, thyroid hormones account for around 30% of your resting metabolic rate. This is why in conditions that are related to abnormally low thyroid function, so a very low amount of hormones that are being produced, these conditions are also correlated with higher body weight and reduced fat-free mass. The hormones that are responsible for the changes in received hunger and satiety satiety are leptin and ghrelin. Leptin is the hormone that is called anorexogenic, so this means that it regulates your satiety levels. It is produced in the fat cells in your body. Circulating levels of leptin in your blood are what would then decrease your satiety levels, so if you have low levels of leptin in your blood, it will feel harder for you to feel satiated. It is generally correlated 
associated with the amount of fat cells in your body. Exceptions are, of course, obese individuals where we see increased hunger levels, although they have a lot of fat cells. Ghrelin has the opposite function. This is the hormone that's called orexogenic and it is responsible for regulating your hunger levels and also meat initiation. Ghrelin generally responds to chronic and acute energy intake, so it depends on how much you're eating throughout the day and these irregulations, so increased levels of ghrelin due to you ingesting lower amounts of energy and decreased leptin levels due to you losing fat mass in the process, both contribute to these altered perceptions of hunger and satiety and promote the regainment of the lost weight. There are also some suggestions that while ghrelin alters appetite, so it increases appetite, it could also reduce the energy expenditure and contribute to the decrease in resting metabolic rate. Insulin also plays some part in this. It functions in a similar way to leptin and it is being produced when you ingest carbohydrates. I'm sure you're already familiar with this since insulin it has a very big topic when talking about diabetes and glucose levels. Insulin, however, is also very important for athletes for the restoration of the glycogen levels in their muscles so that their muscles have enough energy to be functioning properly throughout the next workout. And this is why caloric restriction that athletes undergo in order to reach the desired weight for a competition or to get to in a specific category, for instance, could actually be the detrimental to their muscle recovery since if you're ingesting lower amounts of carbohydrate and energy you have lower circulating insulin and the glycogen levels in your muscles cannot be optimally restored. Since we're on the topic of athletes and muscle building, testosterone which is the hormone that plays a very large role in building muscle is not always impacted by caloric restriction. It appears to be impacted mostly when lean individuals undergo caloric restriction testosterone levels in this case tend to decrease but the same effect is not observed when overweight or obese individuals go on a caloric restrictive diet. For them either testosterone levels do not change or sometimes they even increase. And now one last thing that contributes to these kind of yo-yo effects and to the gaining of the lost weight. When you lose weight and when you lose fat mass you actually do not decrease the amount of fat cells in your body. I found this very bizarre. I never thought that this was the case because it would be very logical for those cells just to kind of disappear or dissolve. But no, you have the same amount of fat cells. They just decrease in size. So you get these smaller adipocytes. This is what the fat cells are called. These smaller fat cells then also logically produce less leptin, which is, as already I mentioned, responsible for satiety. Unfortunately, these small fat cells are also optimized to store energy more effectively. There is also a greater expression of the genes that regulate energy storage there. And in some cases, this was found in animal studies, after this period of caloric restriction, there is also possibility for the fat cells to become more than they were initially. Your body starts producing new smaller fat cells that are again optimized for the storage of more fats. And in cases like this, it is a rare case by the way, it does not happen, happen to everyone that has been under caloric restriction, but this would explain also the case where people who went on a diet and then relapsed went over the weight that they were initially at before starting their weight loss journey. Now we're moving on to the main topic of the video and this is the diet breaks. Diet breaks are a period of time where you go into an energy balance uh, it usually alternates with periods of energy restriction. So an example of this would be two weeks of caloric restriction, then one week diet break. It, there is no like a specific protocol for how much days a diet break should last. These diet breaks become increasingly popular among athletes since for them it's even harder to lose weight when they already have a lean body. Studies in overweight individuals have also been made but a large focus is really athletes. And the first study that I'm going to discuss uh, tested the impact of diet breaks on, on young resistance trained lean women. So they
they were not overweight or obese. Then there were two kinds of interventions, six weeks interventions. The first one was continuous caloric restriction of 25%, so not in quite so aggressive. And the second kind of intervention was alternating two weeks of the caloric restriction and then you get one week diet break, then again two weeks, then one week diet break and two weeks and then another diet break. This study did not find any specific positive impact on resting metabolic rate or weight loss of the diet breaks compared to the continuous caloric restriction process. They both had the same impact. This is probably due to the fact that there were generally no detrimental effects of the caloric restriction of the resting metabolic rates in these kinds of diets. It was not so aggressive to induce these very negative effects. The only positive impact that they found was psychological, it's kind of subjective, and it was decreased desire to not adhere to the diet. A decreased disinhibition, this is the word they used, among the women that had these diet breaks, of course, these diet breaks compared to the women with the continuous caloric restriction. This is very logical since if you're having these periods of diet breaks, then you are able to again indulge, maybe not overdo it because you're at maintenance, but still consume a little bit more food and it gives you this kind of a mental break. On the other side, studies that have a longer duration seem to support that diet breaks could be very positive for weight loss maintenance in the long run. The most popular example is the so-called Matador study that involved 51 obese males that underwent either a continuous caloric restriction protocol or again kind of a diet breaks protocol. Here the caloric restriction protocol was a bit more aggressive. They were put on 67% of their maintenance calories for 16 weeks. So this is a lot longer than the previous study duration. The diet break a group, they had eight two-week blocks of the caloric restriction diets and then seven two-week blocks of diet breaks. So generally for them the duration was much longer. And this study found that the group that also had these diet breaks actually lost more weight and maintained their fat-free mass while losing more fat mass at the same time. They also were better at maintaining the weights after a three-month follow-up. This is the study that supports the strongest the science of diet breaks, probably because of the longer duration since over time this restrictive mindset is harder to maintain if you decide Decide to go on such kind of a restrictive diet for a really long period and if again it's more aggressive as we see here with 67% of maintenance compared again to the previous study where they were at 75% of maintenance. Again moving on to the topic of athletes. There have been some studies, they have, they are not a lot in numbers or, and they're not the strongest of scientific evidence, but they support the fact that if you have some kind of a hormone dysregulation due to caloric restrictive diets, doing a diet break could lead to a temporary increase in leptin levels, which is supposed to lead to an increased resting metabolic rate. This one specific study found a 7% increase in the total daily energy expenditure after these diet breaks periods. This is why some health athletes, fitness coaches really support this idea strongly that diet breaks could prevent downgrades in energy expenditure, also replenish the muscle glycogen stores because of the increased amounts of carbohydrates that you're ingesting and calories in general and also provide some kind of mental refreshment. If you are undergoing a long caloric restrictive process and you want to undergo a diet break, there are a few things that you might need to consider. Macronutrient composition, again during diet breaks, could influence the way that this diet break impacts your overall progress. Protein is one of the very important things that you need to keep in mind since protein promotes satiety and at the same time the retainment of the muscle mass in your body. It also has the highest thermic effect after consumption with around 20% of its energy being used up for its digestion. The distribution of carbohydrates and fats across 
the diet is not as important as protein and some studies suggest that so their distribution does not have any impact however for athletes that require high amounts of energy especially when you're thinking about endurance sports such as swimming or marathon runners for them a higher carbohydrate intake might be highly beneficial because it would replenish their glycogen stores they just require a lot more energy to perform these high intensity sports energy from fats can be anywhere between 10 to 25 percent some studies also in the female subjects found that these higher carbohydrate intakes also led to increased levels of leptin circulating in the blood where the the high fat diet did not lead to an increased leptin levels. This is why these kinds of high carbohydrate diets could also be beneficial if the same effects are also observed in overweight and obese individuals since overweight and obese individuals generally exhibit some disordered leptin levels. Some of them suffer from leptin resistance which is why their satiety is not regulated by the amount of fat that they have in their body. On a final note, diet Breaks are a very effective tool to combat especially the negative psychological effects of following a restrictive diet for a longer period of time. Its only downside is that it might take you a longer time to reach the desired weight goal. At the same time, diet breaks, according to this one very big study, the Matador study, could also provide a better way to maintain the lost weight long term. And I believe that if you practice such diet breaks more often eating and maintenance you might as well also get better at intuitive eating and kind of improve your mindset around food when you get these kinds of mental refreshment periods so that you do not get too obsessed and uh, too rigid around your diet rules thank you so much for watching this video i hope that i helped you with something today and that you learned something new let me know down in the comments if you would like me to do a video on a specific topic don't forget to like and subscribe and I will be seeing you next time.